Um, I have been to the Froyo downtown. It's pretty good. Um, I think my favorite flavor is the, still kind of like the vanilla, but I do like to mix with the different toppings and stuff. So I think that's pretty good. I like the Cod's Corner Cafe because um, I don't know if you've ever seen the show A Different World. I think it'd be something like that, how they had the pit on there. I think it'd be something like that, you know, a good place for the students to have employment and somewhere to eat and get a snack. So I think it'd be a good, it's a good idea for the, for the school in general and the environment for the school. I think it adds, you know, somewhat of a character to the school. I liked Froyo, original plain yogurt flavor is my favorite. My kids love it. They go there and they like the fact that they can put their own toppings on it and they get to get their own flavor in their own little bowls and they love the colored spoons. So I think it's pretty good for the economy here in commerce. So. Hello, my name is Dan Jones, president of Texas A&M University Commerce and thank you for joining us on our final segment here on the President's Table. And we've been hearing from our students about some great new additions to our community, the uh, City Froyo downtown and the new College Corner Cafe getting ready to open up on uh, Lee Street, right adjacent to campus, which is it's a good lead in to our last segment because we're going to be talking about some great new additions to our campus. And uh, our guest today is David McKenna, who's in charge of all of our facilities here on campus. It's a big job and an ever-changing job. So David, welcome. For, uh, what, we thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Can you tell us just, uh, uh, it's been a busy year for you yeah. and uh, all your, your crew. What's, uh, what's been going on in terms of new additions to campus in the last year or so? Well, we've uh, completed phase one uh, housing, uh, which uh, the opening was held in uh, August, and uh, that added 252 new beds uh, to the campus and on a great facility uh, off of uh, Culver and uh, Highway 50. Uh, and we also uh, were able to finish off uh, all of the needed work in the music building. That mm -hmm. is completely done in a, a state-of-the-art facility, uh, which I, I'm pretty sure everybody has been through. Uh, just a great facility. And uh, in addition, uh, we have uh, done some work at the nursing building, which uh, was the old Episcopal Church and mm -hmm. Fellowship Hall, and converted that into the nursing building. And uh, by Thursday of this week, we will be finished with an addition to it, which right. will be a, a working lab uh, for the students to use and to work in. Um, uh, beyond that, the uh, cafeteria expansion meetings are going on. Uh, we have an architect, and uh, we're developing the plans to expand that so that there's additional seating, which will help uh, immediately with, with the growth of the university. And uh, as we add in phase two uh, housing, a 500 plus bed uh, facility uh, just down on West Neal in Culver. Mm -hmm. uh, that will help uh, take some of that strain off of the uh, cafeteria dining experience. Right, right. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, phase two of our student housing. Um, that's, uh, as you say, we opened uh, our first phase, Pride Rock Hall, Pride Rock right? Hall. Which was uh, the name that the students suggested. Yeah. And about 250 beds. The next, uh, the next residence hall will be double that size, yes. about 550, and it'll be immediately adjacent to the one that we just opened. Yes. Uh, phase two will uh, follow the have the same look and feel as phase one as we bring that forward. Uh, it will be a four-story building, and uh, basically the the arrangement inside would lend itself to the uh, same uh, apartment. Uh, open and, and two rooms uh, for uh, students to uh, live in. It would also include, uh, of course, all the RA rooms, the uh, handicap rooms, the uh, uh, convenience store, mm -hmm. and, and uh, in the knuckle, which you see here, some meeting areas uh, which have been well received out of phase one, and we brought that forward in phase two as, as, a, as a common theme to, to kind of pull that together, but they have been well received and used. Uh, by the students. You know, one of the nice things about this facility, and as you can see, this kind of mirrors the look and feel of the, uh, the existing facility, it's just going to be a lot bigger, is that it lends itself very well to programming. Mm -hmm. And I just learned today, uh, in fact, we were in the same meeting, we heard this together, that our retention rate for students who live on campus is 92 percent. In other words, if you live on, in, on, in a residence hall on campus, there's a 92% chance you're going to come back next year and continue your college education. For comparison purposes, our rate for all the entire student body is 65, 70%. Mm -hmm. So 
significant uh, uh, success factor if you if you live on campus. It is. It is. And and you know it is definitely if you build it they will come and and right. uh, they came early and moved in quickly. And right. <laughs> I think they're ready for phase two to, right. to get going. Yeah, I know that uh, there was a waiting list to get into this one, and yeah. uh, uh, but it, I mean it's it's worth waiting for. It really is a beautiful facility. Yeah. Now, it, when when we are fully built out, what's it going to look like over there in that in that area? This is phase one. Or phase one just opened. This is phase two. Phase two. Uh, phase three would follow and, and be just a little north of phase two on West Neal, uh -huh. uh, and follow the same kind of a U shape, um, and it creates a corridor that comes out of uh, the Whitley uh, dorm sidewalk that would walk right through this uh, development of four phases mm -hmm. and uh, each of them would feed into each other and uh, so at the end of the day we would have over 2,500 rooms in the uh, residential complex in that area uh, of course uh, it would mean those uh, the older buildings the ones done in the 60s would be gone and, and mm -hmm. we would have four state-of-the-art uh, living facilities on campus. Right. And as the people in uh, residence, uh, residential living and learning remind me all the time, these are not dormitories. These are residence halls, residence complete halls. with programming, with uh, learning communities, yeah. communities of interest. And when fully built out, we'll have a kind of a traditional college quadrangle feel to it. It will. And uh, there are, you know, as you look at each phase, there are different facets. As I said, in phase two, there would be a convenience store. Mm -hmm. uh, phase three, uh, you know, you, you might be looking at other elements to add into it. So it's, it's always evolving. Right. And we just have to see where we were in a couple of years and what would be needed. At right. That time. And, and what the students are interested in seeing. Exactly. Uh, in the time we have left, we have another development uh, that's very exciting and that it represents uh, uh, a, a new asset for the community, although the university has played a pivotal role here. And that is the, uh, the land uh, along the highway, uh, directly adjacent to Whitley Hall, mm -hmm. kind of across the street from Walmart. And uh, uh, on a previous program, we talked about uh, how the university has sold seven acres of that to a developer. Mm -hmm. And uh, those of you, uh, the, of our viewers who have been up and down Highway 24 in the last couple of months have seen some signs go up mm -hmm. talking about available land available for development. Right. Um, where are we in that process, and, and uh, what, what is envisioned for that development? Well, the, the vision is that uh, there would be a development of, of the 7.3 acres uh, with Armstrong Development Properties out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, a national company that has done this uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would bring in a, a uh, the plan is a full service restaurant, a, a fast food restaurant, a retail space. Uh, and, and at the hub of this would be a full-service pharmacy, a, a CVS. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the flagship of the uh, retail strip there. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, as they evolve and, and move through this, other venues may pop up, and that could change right. uh, as far as fast food or, or retail or whatever. Uh, but those would all be worked out with the university and, and, uh, as they go forward. But that is th the plan is to bring retail and, and to have a CVS there and then develop it from there. Yeah, well, it's a great new addition to the community, uh, help build the tax base, it'll be an yes. amenity for our students and, a, and a, a place for them to work as well. It should. Well, a lot of great things going on on campus, and we're very proud of, very proud of the work that you're doing, David, so yeah. thanks again for joining us. Thank you. And I would like to thank our viewers for joining us as well, and wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season.